What's up guys, Jay Lee here with another Northwest Podcast. Um, I want to talk about how women change. Um, this is something that's a little bit um, on a deeper level. Um, and when I say deeper level, obviously I'm talking about female nature. Obviously I'm talking about hypergamy. It's uh, It's very difficult to get in a relationship with somebody you can't trust. I think trust is probably one of, you know, the deepest foundations of a relationship. I would say the top three are trust, communication, and loyalty, right? You can't trust somebody who's not loyal, okay? Ironically, um, one of the biggest fears that women have with men is that men won't be loyal to them. The, I mean, there's a lot you can, you, there's a lot you can dissect from that alone, right? The fact that women are hypergamous, so they choose highly sought after men, and then they're worried that these highly sought after men, you know, will cheat on them. It's like a, you know, it's like a catch twenty two. Well, if you're if you're choosing a highly sought after man, then it stands to reason that there's a good probability or a good chance that he could cheat on you because a lot of other women want him. So he's got a lot of options. And this is where women kind of, like I said, shoot themselves in the foot. Now, I'm not saying that they shouldn't go after high-quality men. What I'm saying is that hypergamy in and of itself is shitty. It's a shitty um, sexual strategy. It's a, sh- it's a shitty relationship strategy. The reason why it's shitty is because it places emphasis on things that are transient. At any time, he could get fat at any time he could you know not dress as nice at any time he could lose his social group at any time he could lose his money so everything there is transient so it's like a it reminds me of this bible verse that i used to like when i was younger um you know jesus was 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 speaking you know in the gospels and he was talking about how people some people build their foundation upon a a sandy foundation meaning the sand can change this you know with the tide it comes in or or whatever what have you that foundation can change but if you build your foundation on a rock that foundation is not going to change right so to me when women are hypergamous they're building their foundation on a sandy uh, uh, on a sandy foundation so because, like I said, it, you know, at any time, the man can lose his job, he can lose his money, he can lose his house. At any time, he could get sick. At any time, you know, he could get out of shape. He could lose his looks, or he could lose his his uh, social circle. He could lose his um, social status. At any time, and the irony is, so many people are anxiously seeking these things oh i gotta go out. You know, I gotta be an alpha. I gotta have this great social group. I gotta. And there's so many programs out there and books that teach you how to do this oh you know you know increase your intelligence uh not intelligence but increase your social intelligence increase your social status increase your social game so you can have more power socially so you can have more friends so you can have more influence all this stuff and it's like there might be a time and place for that that might be beneficial to learn right just in general um, but like I said, at any time you could lose that. At any time you could lose your friends. Your friends could betray you, stab you in the back. You could lose your job. Your boss doesn't like you. Anything could happen. You mess up at work, you're fired, right? Anything could happen. You can't pay your mortgage. You get sick. Is she going to stick with you through all that, right? So that's not a, that's not a great foundation, okay? But this is female nature, right? Which is ta- which is changeable, and it, and it changes with the circumstance. Oh, you know, he was such a bad boy, and that's why I liked him. I mean, how many times, you know, I'm I'm in my thirties, okay. I, I'm not the oldest guy, but I'm not the youngest guy either. I've heard this statement a lot, and I think, you know, the eighties and nineties to me was the was the divorce generation. Nowadays, people are just avoiding marriage in general, which is good, you know, in a sense. Um, but in the eighties and nineties and the two thousands, people were still getting married and they were still getting divorced a lot. And one of the things I I always remember hearing was, 
women saying, he's just not the man I married. And it's not to say I'm around divorce all the time, but whenever I would read up on it or watch videos on it or just hear about marriage in general, and, I, and whenever I would hear from the female perspective, that was one of the things that I always heard. She, I was, he's just not the man I married anymore. He just changed. It's just like, yeah, people change. Circumstances change. Things change. And one of the sickest things I've ever seen is women only being there for you when you're on the up and up, when things are exactly how she wants them. And they've always got that exit plan. They've always got that backup guy. They've always got the backup plan in case things change. And if that's female nature, then I want nothing to do with it. I want nothing to do with it. And I think women are just this is their strategy their strategy is to you know ride the wave of male success i've had several high waves in my life where i've just been on top for whatever reason whether it was social status or whether it was personal confidence or prowess whether i was in really good shape or i just happened to be dressing cool or i just happened to be my mood or my personality what you know the stars aligned and i just was confident or whatever whatever and it's funny how women are there when you when you're when you're doing good it's funny how women are there when you're at a high peak but when you're not when you're down and out when you're unconfident they're nowhere to be found believe me and um you learn a lot about female nature from failure okay there was a time period in my life where i was very ambitious and i was very you know, relatively successful in my, you know, personal circle was relatively successful in the things that I was, I was pursuing. And because of that, and, and I was so young doing it, I didn't know, I just thought, oh, it must be me. And I didn't realize that the women were around, you know, I was attracting women and they were around because I was on my upswing. If you're not on your upswing and you're on a downswing or you're down and out, believe me, no one's there. Everyone's gone. All your cool friends, everybody who thought you were great. People like winners, particularly in America. We are a nation of winner celebrators. We celebrate winners. We love winners. And we do not like losers. America hates losers. But that's a problem in and of itself because everybody loses. Everybody fails. No, not everybody's a perpetual loser, but people fail. People make mistakes. People mess up. People slip up. People lose their their foothold. People fall off, okay? So if a woman's not going to be there for you, if your friends aren't going to be there for you, if people aren't going to be there for you when you lose or you're not doing good or your energy's low, whatever, whatever, I've been through it all. And it's funny how people disappear. People fall off. It's funny how people are there. You know, I used to meet lots and lots of people when I was on top. I had high confidence. I was going places. Woo, woo, woo. You know, I, I just didn't know any better at that time. Then when I fell off, nobody was there. Nobody cared. In fact, people avoided me. They could, they could sense depression on me. They could sense failure on me. They could sense negative energy. And it's like, on the one hand, yeah, you know, we don't want to be around negative energy on the one hand. But on the other hand, it's like humanity trumps that. You know, when you have humanity, like a person who can go and talk to a homeless person or a person who can mix and mingle amongst poor people, like, you would hope that that would be normal. You would hope that that would be, in a sense, like, everybody could do that. But actually, in today's day and age, it takes a special kind of person to do that. You know, that's a rare type of person, which is unfortunate. Because people don't have that kind of humanity. And when you have hypergamy, when you have female nature that is only seeking out the top men, the successful men, then naturally they're not going to be like that. Naturally they're not going to be there for you.